The fossil record stands as a monumental testimony to the biblical flood. Ladies and gentlemen, the earth is covered in flood sediments that are hundreds of feet thick and laden with the fossils of dead plants and animals, like the layers exposed to the Grand Canyon. In many places, these layers of rocks reach kilometers of thickness. These layers of rocks stretch for hundreds of miles, and some can be traced for thousands of miles, all the way from one side of the continent to the other. This U.S. Geological Survey diagram shows how the layers of rocks exposed in the Grand Canyon, all the way over on the right side of this document, extend, extend south across Utah through Zion National Park and Bryce Canyon National Parks. The Tapeat Sandstone, shown here, were exposed at the Grand Canyon extends over much of North America. When we consider that the Tapeat Sandstone is a type of sedimentary rock called a turbidite, a rock resulting from underwater landslides called turbidity currents, the evidence this provides for a continental-wide catastrophe is overwhelming. This diagram, also by the U.S. Geological Survey, shows the extent of the layers of the fossil record that are on the surface in North America. Sedimentary rocks, hundreds of feet thick, blanket the earth, except where erosion or uplift has removed these layers. And the layers in general extend for hundreds to thousands of miles. We also find ocean fossils everywhere. They can be found on the tops of every mountain chain in the world. You go up to the Andes or Alps, you can find ocean fossils. Well, the fact that the fo ocean fossils are on the tops of mountains is not really the big deal because ocean fossils can be pushed up onto the top of a mountain by tectonic activity. The bigger deal is that ocean fossils are found everywhere, and I'm meaning throughout the fossil record. These, the idealized drawings like you see here often show mostly terrestrial animals, but uh, the reality is that 95% of all fossils are marine invertebrates, primarily shellfish. 95% of the remaining 5% are plants, 95% of the rest are fish, most of the rest are insects. The reality of the fossil record is that much less than 1% of the fossils in the fossil record are land vertebrates. It's almost entirely a record of ocean fossils. It is clear that from the fossil record that, that it was formed when oceans had inundated terrestrial habitats, causing land and marine organisms to be buried together. If we interpret these findings consistent with the Bible, it is clear this was due to a single extended global-scale global event. Or if interpreted within the boundaries of philosophical naturalism, or what we call secular geology, repeated inundations of the oceans would instead be responsible. And, and this is what they argue for, that during repeated ice ages, the ocean levels rose and fell. The problem with this is we don't just find ocean fossils on the outer edges of the continents but we find them across the continents, uh, generally speaking, throughout the fossil record. We also find uh, lots and lots of what are called uh, soft tissues. Now, this is a huge problem uh, for evolution, is finding soft tissues because of the way that fossils are described to form. Repetent, recent and rapid catastrophic burial by sediments is strongly supported by these kinds of fossils. Some uh, fossilized plants and animals show almost no signs of normal decomposition, proving they were buried quickly by sediments. Many have now been discovered that still contain preserved soft tissues that simply cannot survive for millions of years. Stomach contents, for example, uh, were so well preserved in a number of extinct species by pa that paleontologists were able to identify their diets and therefore their, ha their habitat. Hadrosaurs, uh, shown here, uh, a duck-billed dinosaur, was once thought to be semi-aquatic because it had a duck bill like your waterfowl. Um, and were, uh, you know, lived, lived and feed at the water's edge, like, like uh, your other waterfowl. But, an, but analysis of stomach contents reveal that they forged at much higher elevations. Hadrosaur bones have also been found that are not even fossilized or mineralized. This is the toe bone of a hadrosaur that's on display at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, which allows visitors to touch real dinosaur bones. The caption on the exhibit there reads, this is real dinosaur bone from the hind foot of a genus of hadrosaur. Although it is 69 million years old, it is still original bone and not rock. Lots of fossils have been found that show almost no sign of normal decomposition. Delicate structures like eyes and soft feathery appendages are preserved in fossil form. 
many of of them identical to animals and plants we still have today. Often found so are preserved that we can identify them by species. Delicate structures like eyes and membranous wings of a dragonfly are preserved. Trilobites are extinct creatures shown here, but their eyes are so well preserved in, the fossils, in fossil specimens that it enabled paleontologists to identify or to, to learn about their unique compound eyes. This specimen was, so, was buried so quickly that it didn't even have time to retract its eye stalks. This notosaur was discovered in Alberta, Canada and is dated by conventional means at 110 million years old, but is so well preserved it seems to be just staring back at you. Notosaurs like this one were, were, were packing some serious armor, like these protective plates on their back, or these spikes around their neck and shoulders, the longest of which was 20 inches long. But also look there at some of the exquisitely preserved skin. Skin was preserved in this specimen. Ribs were preserved in this specimen, and even stomach contents. Well, the problem with finding fossilized soft tissues is that animals don't just lay around like this waiting for sediments to slowly cover them, allowing for fossilization. When an animal or plant dies, decomposition is fairly rapid and is a necessary part of the ecosystem to make those materials available to get to the next generations. First, scavengers will come and uh, pick, a, pick apart the, you know, the, pick on the fleshy parts of the body, and then bacteria and fungi, the primary decomposers in an ecosystem, will usually come through and make short work of anything that's remaining, and then chemical processes like oxidation will make short work of the rest. To get a fossil, uh, especially a fossil with a, what we call a fully articulated or a complete skeleton or soft tissues requires rapid and massive burial to slow or prevent decomposition allowing uh, fossilization to take place. Fully uh, articulated fish fossils like the ones that we see were arguably killed by the sedimentary flow that entombed them preventing their decomposition and allowing fossilization to take place. Geologists claim that uh, fossilization requires millions of years, but many fossils have been found with fully articulated skeletons like this fish here. Soft fleshy parts such as skin, cartilage, unborn fetuses have been found, stomach contents like we've already seen. These soft tissues testify to a rapid burial by sediments. This fish was buried by sediments before it had time to finish gulping down its meal. Thus, it became the petrified Last Supper. This ichthyosaur, uh, an extinct marine reptile, is in the process of giving birth when it was uh, buried by sediments rapidly and, uh, again, preserving it, allowing it to become a fossil. A fossil. Soft tissues like, uh, again, stomach contents of skin have been discovered that date by conventional methods well beyond 100 million years old. Strong proof that these tissues are not that old, but were instead buried recently and catastrophically. Other, other evidence for the global flood from the fossils comes from the existence of fossil graveyards or bone beds that have been found that contain thousands of animals. Uh, the Dinosaur National Monument shown here is located in northwestern Colorado, straddling the Utah border, and it protects a large deposit of dinosaur fossils that belong to at least 11 different kinds of dinosaurs. Whole communities of organisms are found buried together in these mass mortality beds. Again, these uh, mass graveyards are, support the catastrophic nature of the sedimentary flows that preserve them from decomposing and allow them to become a fossil. Some fossils are found oriented. Uh, look at this fossil and the size of the nautiloids that you see, you see here. It must have required some very unusual and dynamic conditions such as rapid underwater flow of sediments to orient all of these big nautiloids. Interestingly, a number of fossil beds have also been found that are termed log jam beds. There, there's including one that was found in the Morrison Formation here in the United States where a bunch of dinosaurs have been found. A log jam uh, is believed to have formed when animals become entangled in a flood. Much like logs became entangled when uh, being transported downriver, this log jam uh, from this image uh, was discovered up in Alberta, Canada a few years ago. Log jam beds, again, speak to the certainty of the catastrophic nature of the, of the fossil record. Another, another example are the death pose fossils that we find. 
which have their neck arched back from apparently struggling to free themselves while being covered by sediments. A great many fossils of animals with long necks have in fact been found that have this same general appearance. Again, supporting the catastrophic nature of the sedimentary uh, record. Now, these animals struggling to free themselves as they slowly became buried by sediments. Ladies and gentlemen, the fossil record is one of the main lines of evidentiary support for the theory of evolution. Uh, and again, because fossils are typically found below or above other fossils in these layers of rocks, evolutionists argue that this arrangement of fossils shows that life on Earth has changed over time. And sadly, it was this fossil sorting that has convinced a great many Christians that the Bible was not accurate about the age of the Earth, and instead that evolution must be true. However, if we interpret this fossil sorting from within the biblical worldview, it merely represents the destruction of successive life zones, or what we call biomes by rising waters during the biblical or global flood. And I want to show you an example of, uh, uh, and it's an example of this. I showed you this, uh, this uh, image before. Again, this, uh, this image by the U.S. Geologic Survey shows the layers of the fossil record that are on the surface of North America. Uh, let me uh, enlarge this image for you so you can show, see this a little better. Again, these are the layers of the fossil record that are on the surface of North America. And these layers have been color-coded so you can see the layers that are believed to have been the lowest in geologic time versus those that are highest in geologic time. See that? But again, we argue that what you're looking at there are, is not, are not geologic eras, but just the destruction of, this, of habitats. Habitats which differ from one another based on the amount of rainfall and uh, temperature. So ha habitats like grasslands and your tropical rainforest, your deciduous forest, your alpine meadows, these differ from one another predominantly by the amount of rainfall and elevation, um, or, excuse me, the amount of rainfall and temperature, both of which are related to elevation. So as the floodwaters rose, it destroyed uh, habitats one after the other, Next to this image, I am placing an image that I just downloaded off Wikipedia that shows the habitats in North America. And I want you to compare those two images. Notice the similarities between these two, because ladies and gentlemen, that's all you're looking at in the fossil record, is the destruction of habitats as the floodwaters rose gradually upon the earth. Don't allow this memorial that you see here of fossils and rocks to be destroyed by false teachings. Remember what these rocks mean. They are and were meant to be an everlasting reminder of God's hatred and judgment of sin. But know this, just as God provided a way for Noah to be saved in the coming judgment, so he has provided a way for us to be saved from the judgment that is to come through his son Jesus. All he asks is that we repent of our, the sin in our lives, turn away from these things that separate us from God, Jesus has paid the penalty for us.